Hello everyone. Uh, we have a speech uh, by Dan Tinghui. Uh, it's about uh, Noom, a chain uh, integration and free BSD porting. Okay, let's welcome Dan Tinghui. Talking about the no archive integration and then FreeBSD porting. Uh, uh, I, and I'm sponsored by the no Foundation to, to be here. There, there is two topics today: archive integrations. Is a Google Summer of Code project I have done last summer. Its goal is to integrate archive support into regular GNOME applications. This allows you to, to download and upload folders without manually create any without manually create archive and th there is a li link of the project and before be before the project it is already designed by the design team and there is a whiteboard previous porting is another work we try to port the norm to FreeBSD because uh, there is a lot of users on the FreeBSD forum and mailing this as for the for for the no three. Currently, FreeBSD package only contains the no two, and we hope we can change the situation. Uh, you are welcome to download this site, and there are many links in this site, and I, I hope everyone can download it as we, I, as I may not click all links in this talk, and there is, four, there is four, four download link. Archive integration is is my Google Summer of Code project in the last summer. And use, users do not need to know what, what is an archive. The the most important thing of this project is is not to compress compress the folders but to transfer the folders over the internet as a file. So we think users should just click the folders when they want to upload and the downloaded archive will, will be automatically extracted as a folder. We still provide options about creating folders. The it is a lot easier than using file roller or command line. Sometimes users may want to manually extract or create an archive, and this still can be done by using file roller or other applications. Some archives such as RPM and DEB which are which are distribution package will be included by default and there they are not extracted automatically. In order to integrate archive function functions into many GNOME applications, I wrote a new library called GNOME Auto R. It 
It uses live archive, which which can deal with many many archive formats. And it can recognize the archive without knowing its file name or extension. It will automatically detect its format and extract them. Because it is a GNOME project, we use GIO as a backend to work, work to, to read and write, write archives. And uh, currently, it, 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 there is no release. So if you want to, want to read the code, you can just, down, just clone through the through Git. There is no no applications. Uh, I already r write patches in the last summer for integrate archive support into into Epiphany Evolution and Empathy. But currently, only Evolution is Evolution patch is going to to be merged. The API is not, not stable now, and I hope sometime I can stabilize it. Gnome Auto R provides simple functions to for GL, GLive, and GTK based applications. It is it is designed to to be portable, so there won't be any. I hope there won't be any portable portability problem on on your applications if you use the Gnome Auto R. It also provides some GT, GTK widgets, so user can easily select the form archive format they want. And the the preference related to to archive can be retrieved using G settings. The non auto R is just a simple library to to be, to to help application integrate archive support. It does not replace file roller or other tools. And it only supports Live Archive as, as an archive extraction backend, ar archive processing backend. Uh, file Roller supports a lot more backend, and it can also use use external commands to create or extracting archives. The Non Auto R use Live Archive itself, but it is not a GLIB binding for Live Archive. If you want to use the you know, Auto R in your applications, you just need to do do these four things. First, you need to. You need to read read preference of the users with these functions, and these functions will return an auto R prep object, and you can use this object to extract or create archive. When when user need to when user want to upload a folders or transfer of and or transfer a folder uh, the the 
the no the no auto R will automate will automatically uh, if you uh, users can choose several source folders or files and GNOME Auto Art will automatically convert them into an archive. If the users choose if user selects more more than one sources and GNOME Auto R will automatically add a top level directory so the receiver who will who who may just extracting using the simple command such as tr xf will not cause mess in in his folder. Automatically extract archive is also useful. But it is it is more complex than creating archives because some archives may contain malicious tests which will cause cause mess in in the user directories. The goal of the of the auto R is tricked is it always produces single file if if the archive contains only one file, such as gz or bz2, or if the archive contains more than one file, it will cre create a single top-level directory in the output directory. The, the file name is, is easy to expect. For example, if you have an archive called abc.tar.gz, and there will be a folder called ABC being created in the output directory. It will also automatically choose different name if the folder already exists. It can also ignore unneeded files such as Double underscore Mac OS X, which is very common if the archive is originally created on, on OS X. Here is some screenshot with there. Here is some screenshot. Uh, I did epiphany. I add archive integration into Epiphany last year, uh, but currently I don't have much time to port it to 3.12, so it only work with 3.10. If I have time this summer, I will do I will do it. Uh, there. There is some screenshot here. For example, you are downloading Linux source. After the download is completed, it will automatically extract it with the same name. Creating archives is is more interesting because not all file choosing button can allow choosing multiple files. If the if the button only allow choosing single file, the users can still choose multiple files and and the file and all files chosen by by users will will be converted into an, a single archive and user can choose choose the file name here. If users don't do not fill in this text 
text box and the they will automatically fill in based on the files chosen by the user. Multiple files, even file choosing button can even file choosing button can be can allow choosing multiple files, and each selected file will be converted as as an archive. There is still one problem in in this type of integration, as a WebKit web view can only have one file chooser request. So, if the archive is being created, user cannot user cannot choose another file cannot click on the um, other file choosing button in the same web page. Evolution archive integration is being it is worked recently. I have put the old patch on GNOME 3.10 to 3.12, and I hope this will be a feature in 3.14. There is a bug report, enhancement bug report about the to to track this this feature, and there is my this is my mailing list post about the current prop problem and the features. In, in order to uh, the, the, uh, there is a screenshot if if the attachment the the file name or the attachment the the file name and or the M I N E type of the attachment match match the rule inside the GNOME Auto R and this checkbox will be automatically checked and clicking save it will be automatically extracted. There is no progress bar in evolution to when extracting when saving attachment so there is a also no progress bar about the about the archive extraction progress. There is it also being able it also be able to convert an directory into an archive when you adding Attachment. Here is a screenshot. There is also no progress bar here because uh, because I I did not I I don't know how to calculate the progress with with without scanning all sources. Empathy is. Uh, I also work on empathy last summer. As file transfer in empathy is not easy to set up. I don't. I I cannot use existing online accounts to trans to transfer. To to test the file transfer, so I only test in the same machine using people nearby. Here is a screenshot when 
creating an extracting archive. I I don't fall I I don't fold these patches to mailing this or Bugzilla because there are still bad things bad things in in the patches but <coughs> you you still can you still can download the patches in uh, you, you will find find links if you click on this click on this and you will find my code it contains some some ugly text so I think I need to make a better patch. There is also a common problem in GNOME Auto R. Because in order to create an archive, we will need, need a temporary folder which will con with these, these temporary archive will be stored in. However, the temporary folder may, may not be removed if after the application exits. I already tried to use existing functions to in all these uh, applications that is epiphany, evolution, and empathy to create the temporary directories, but they it seems it seems this application also do also don't clean the temporary folders after it is exited. So it it may be a problem if you create many archives. Uh, it is not easy to find the location of the temporary archive because it is up to every application. Uh, there is a archive format selecting menu provided by the GNOME, by GNOME Auto R. You will see you will see th this these things if you click on this this this. I I wrote this because I don't want to wrote at wrote many same same manuals for different applications. Applications can just use the, this widget to let users select their preferred format. If the user click on other formats, and this dialog will be shown. Here is all archive formats supported by Live, live Archive. And users can choose every combination between the format and filter. There is also some possible problem in, uh, in this dialogue. Uh, as you can see, there there is many tar archives with different description. Uh, also, more than one CTIO and more than one R. Mm. Yeah, we, we, I may have to solve this problem because the user may not understand what is the difference between 
these similar formats. Although the format is documented in this name page and, and the live archive header. As, as epiphany, evolution, and empathy are all C programs. So the normal auto R is designed to provide provide good C API. However, its async version is not good enough because Because although it use GIO, it did not it did not follow the GIO style async. This will cause other problems. I'm working on providing G object introspection binding. Uh, but this library is originally designed to be a C, C library providing C API. So in some some functions need rework to to be usable on G object introspection binding. Uh, I don't know how uh, I don't use Vala, so there is no Vala binding now. But I think I can add that if I have time. As live arch uh, live archive is already an an abstraction layer for different archive formats. So I hope the non auto R do not have to deal with this different in itself. But the live archive still have some problem when I using different format. Uh, some some format cannot contain folder if I add folder to to it it will return fatal error. Uh, some format require can some format requires file to be able to seek when extracting. The worst thing is live archive may fail with no error code or message. It may return fatal error and giving me now for message. So actually I I read the live archive source code when I'm debugging these issues. The biggest problem in GNOME Auto R is the signal emission issues. As GNOME Auto R originally only provides sync, sync version of functions, I add a sync version of functions by adding a new thread to do the all work inside. The problem is. GTK can GTK widgets can only be manipulated in the main thread. So if GNOME Auto are working on working on a different thread, the signal handler you connected cannot be used to 
manipulate GTK widgets. Actually, uh, this is currently not a problem because I work around this using uh, also not very good method. Uh, all, all G signal emit is replaced by my own functions to to pack the argument and emit a signal in in the main thread using G main contact invoke. I wonder if there is any better way to solve this problem without modifying all existing code. As our as there are always user may receive some bad archive. It may be badly created or or it is malicious. So the security problem is also important in an auto R. In order to be safe, a non auto R will stop stop all work as soon as an error is found. Uh, just like the common implementation in GNU tar and BSD tar, they will remove the leading flash by by default. In order to make to let user easily discover the extracted things, it is needed to it is needed to extract all all files in a in a single top level directory, as previously said. So I will try to remove these components if the extracted file will be located outside the destination. The, the output top level directory. I will go into add more security checking in GNOME Auto R because there are some situation it cannot deal with. Currently, it does not use G file create. So, if there are existing file in the output directory, it will be overwritten. But this situation is very rare as it all no auto are always create a new new directory for the extracted files. There is an example of bad archive. These sim symbolic things point to to some non-existent place. But if this place exists, and it will it may it may cause your existing file to be overwritten. So this problem sh must be fixed. Uh, there is what I did for to test the stability of you know, auto R, and is it also portable? So it don't use any GCC extension, and all public functions will be checked in configurer. So it will 
also work on Windows if you want to. The second topic is previous reporting. As previously currently only have GNOME 2 in their pa package repositories, but uh, many users want to use GNOME 3. So what is the problem? There is a list of desktop, desktop environments in this uh, on FreeBSD only uh, most desktops such as XFCE, KD Enlightenment has almost uh, almost latest version in the package repository. Only GNOME still in 2.32 2 is very old and no longer be, ma be maintained. When you try to get some Information about the previous the GNOME pro about GNOME on previous the you may find this size. It say it is GNOME previous the GNOME project, but the information on this site is very old. It is not up to date. Actually, before GNOME ports, before GNOME package goes into FreeBSD repositories, it will first go into MarkusCon ports. It is where, Mark, where GNOME package in FreeBSD being developed. Before this project is started, it, you know, on FreeBSD is hardly use, usable because most components are broken and cannot be built. In the last year, almost everything depends on network many everything depend on WebKit or Network Manager do not work on FreeBSD. After the, this project is started, GNOME 3.12 already works on FreeBSD. There are primarily four people working on this project. We thank for open BSD ports maintainer as they solved many problems on BSD before this project. There is many problems um, FreeBSD itself does contain problems prevent it being usable. Most, li most library in FreeBSD based system does not have .pc file, PKG config file installed, so configurer failed to check and stage build failed to check to the existence of the library. We hope we can provide PC file just in the base system or via separate package to solve this problem. 
Oh, IB tool is is a major problem on FreeBSD, which caused which caused many GNOME modules to be broken on it. It caused the SO name of the shared library to be changed constantly. For example, if you running JS build to the GLIB, the SO name will be LIB will be LIB GLIB dot dash two point zero dot SO dot zero on Linux, but it will be a very large number on FreeBSD by default. And the number is constantly changed. So, if you operate your G Lab and all all modules you previously built will be broken, so we patch the lab tools to get the same version on Linux. Another problem is FreeBSD install. Dot .la files. It is left to an archive which contains, ma which contains many linking flags when, when a library is built. It causes problems because Live Tool will search for .la file be before regular dot as O file. For example, you have libintl.la installed. Uh, it provides get text. And then when lab tool is trying to search for G it will not search it will not search the G Live you build in JH build prefix, but it will use the version installed on your system because libintl.la specify it. This is a problem because the the version of GLive installed on your system is always older than the one installed by JH builds. So new symbols defined in the header cannot be found, which causes undefined reference error. There is a hard to find problem when porting LIB GTOP. When G GIR scanner is running, it says error closing file, no error. This error message is this error message does not make any sense to for me. Uh, finally we we found this problem over five hours of debugging. It is caused by the function name conflict between FreeBSD library and GLive. Uh, there is also many Many problems in GNOME and much time now, so I will skip some slides.
there is also another strange error when building some modules. Uh, it is caused by GIR scanner behavior difference on non Linux system. The most the most common problem in the most common problem of this module is mismatch return type. This problem exists in already in more than ten modules at There is another big problem is some someone may think C99 in line is the same as C++ in line. So always use static in line or extern in line to prevent problems. There, another problem currently cannot be solved is the is system B dependency. The merge of William French in matter caused matter to be hard depend on system D. Uh, I opened this bug report, but currently there is no discussion and patches are on this. I I hope. Someone can going to solve it because we don't have much time reading these thousand lines of code. Another huge problem is WebKit. This is a very strange error in when building WebKit. Uh, it is caused by the use of non hard expect in R. So we hope everyone can check hard standard before using these these bags. In order to prevent requiring everyone to build GNOME on FreeBSD, I have to write a huge JHBuild RC file to specify options. Someone has added a new feature to JHBuild, so the same same module set file can can, can contain different flags. For example, if the sum dependency only requires R, when Wayland is enabled, you can use this. Or some arguments are only usable on on non Linux system, and you will use this. We hope we hope this this will help GTK OS X project as they they currently manu, man, maintain all module sets file itself. In GNOME 
3.12 and 3.14 module sets file already contains many conditions related to Linux and FreeBSD and X11 and WLAN. In order to catch problem as early as possible, we set up several day to build Tinder boxes to build every day. Thanks for this service. We can now catch problem in one day. There is a current status in Marcos Com port. We will eventually be merged into official FreeBSD package repositories. There is a node 3.12 here. The node 3.14 does not work on FreeBSD because the motor has hard dependency on system D. Please, uh, if you have time, please help us to work on this bug. Uh, here is some guide to set up your day to build environment if you want to work on FreeBSD GNOME project. You can read on these slides contain some some notes not being written on the wiki page. So if this you can read this slide to set up your day to go environment and take this page for reference. This is the end of my talk. Thanks for your listening. Uh, thanks, Lantin uh, Wei has made the process of GNOME, and uh, I suggest everyone use your hand to thank you, uh, thank, thank uh, Lantin Wei make this process. Sangha has the 10 minutes delay and we will have a short break, uh, about 2 minutes, and we will uh, have the next uh, speech uh, by Alexander Morgado from Spanish. Okay, see you later.